So my name is Dr. Liz Barrett. I'm a sport horse veterinarian and emergency surgeon. And today we're gonna to talk about some of the basic parts of anatomy that it's important for a horse owner to know. So starting with the head of the horse, kind of the more important parts that we often talk about, you hear people talk about would be the pole, which is the area between the ears at the top of their head. Uh, that's really important when you're talking about how a bridle fits or when you're, when you're placing a halter. And then obviously down on their muzzle, um, which is the area kind of where their lips contained. Um, that's how they grasp their food um, and get it up into their mouth. Obviously their nostrils are there, that's how they, they smell. They have a spine, horse have a spine just like we do, and the cervical spine is the part that connects their head back to the rest of their body. Continuing back from there, the, the spine continues as the thoracic spine. Um, that's what connects to all of the ribs, which function to help protect your horse's internal organs. So kind of in this area, you have their heart and their lungs that lie underneath their ribs. And behind that, you have their liver and their other uh, intestinal organs in there. Behind that thoracic spine, you have the lumbar spine, which is, which is similar to us. That connects to the sacrum. Um, the sacrum through the sacroiliac joint connects to the rest of the pelvis back here. And behind the sacrum, uh, you have the coccygeal or the, the tail vertebrae, and that's how they, they move their tail, obviously, and take care of flies and whatever else they have to swish off of themselves. So they have a scapula just like we do that connects to their, their shoulder joint. That connects to the humerus. And then the radius comes down to what layman's terms we call the knee in the horse, but it's actually known as a carpus if you were looking at a veterinary book. Below the carpus in the front leg is we have their, their, their cannon bone. Um, behind the cannon bone there's all the, the flexor tendons, which you can see commonly get injured. It's considered a bow tendon or a tendonitis, so you see a swelling kind of in this area if they have something like that. The cannon bone connects to the, the fetlock joint and the pastern bones. There's actually two bones down in the pastern uh, and they connect to um, the coffin bone, which is held within the, within the hoof. Issues that we'll sometimes see in the hoof really commonly are, are foot abscesses. Um, obviously that's what your farrier deals with when they put their, their horseshoes on. When you move to their, to their hind end, uh, which is, you can see is big and muscular, that's kind of the powerhouse for the horse. Um, the majority of their weight is actually supported and held up by their front end. They carry 70% of their weight there and the hind end just kind of pushes those front legs along. So just like this, they have a, they have a hip joint here as well and a femur that connects to the stifle joint, which is just like our knee joint. They have a, a patella there. Occasionally we'll see horses that get a, get a locking patella or upward fixation of the patella and it kind of catches when they try to move it. Then they have their, their tibia, which is actually known as the gaskin, uh, as, a, as a layman's term, and comes down to their hock, um, which is the main, main joint that helps them flex their, their limb and the hind leg. Each joint itself is made up of a little capsule that has fluid inside of it and those ligaments that attach the bone to each other. And from the hock down, they have all the same structures in their hind leg as they do in their front leg, like the flexor tendons, the uh, cannon bone, and, and everything else. It's important for anybody who's working around horses to have a basic knowledge of the normal anatomy of a horse so you can recognize when there's something abnormal and be able to communicate that effectively with either your veterinarian or your trainer.